Hey, what's up, people? Today, I will be reacting to Kanye West's most recent interview with Tim Pool. Now, I'm not super familiar with Tim's work, but I have heard vague references to him. And my understanding is that he's made a career out of pretending to be a centrist, when in all actuality, he is a conservative. Actually, I should probably verify that before I speak out of turn. Let me check something here. Qatar bans pro-LGBTQ gear triggering war fans. Disney CEO Bob Chapek was fired for refusing to bow to wokeness. CNN and Vice start cutting staff. They went woke and got broke. It was a red wave. Democrats use shady tactics. I just don't like when right-wingers pretend to be centrist in order to appeal to centrists and drag them over to the right. It just strikes me as a very disingenuous presentation of who you are and where your political beliefs really lie. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving Thanksgiving, you were uh, with, with your families, families or loved ones, ones or at least uh, relaxed and enjoyed yourself. Over the past week, there was a, a particularly big news story that's resulted in a continued news cycle, which is now going on for over a week, which is in many ways unheard of. But right now, because Donald Trump went to dinner with Ye and Nick Fuentes, among others, he is now being denounced by Mike Pence, several Republican senators, and uh, for whatever reason, this story, for, for many reasons I suppose people have made, this story has persisted till today. Well, first off, I think Mike Pence and a good portion of the Republican Party disavowed Trump way before he had dinner with Nick Fuentes. And we are able to actually sit down with the, uh, several of the individuals involved in that story, notably Ye, Nick Fuentes, and Molly Annapolis, of course, who made the dinner happen. It's my understanding. Or no, at least at the no. end. I, I had the dinner invite before I met Milo. Okay, my bad, my bad. There you go. So uh, we're going we're gonna to jump right into this story. I just overcomplicated it. Absolutely. <laughs> So we're, we're gonna we're gonna start. It sounds like Kanye is already starting the interview from a hostile position, which is to say he interrupts Tim Pool to correct him on the timeline of when he was invited to have dinner with Donald Trump. But who knows? Sometimes I'll be in a conversation with someone and they'll say something that is factually incorrect, and instead of waiting for them to finish their sentence, I will interject or correct them in mid sentence. And I think the older I've gotten, the better I am at just letting people finish their sentence and if i'm going to correct them i'm not gonna no 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 you're wrong which is kind of what kanye did when he said no 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 i was invited before i met milo usually if you want to correct someone you'll wait until they finish their sentence and then you'll say thank you for the introduction tim but just for the record i was invited to trump's dinner before i met milo you know and then tim will say oh my bad but it seems like kanye is already starting from like an adversarial place i don't know things might lose Loosen up, but that's just my initial observation. Start with that. There's a lot we we, we want to talk about, and uh, you know what, man? This is a this is a very uh, big story. Uh, a lot of people have questions about. Wait, but did you know, I just hear Milo's voice? For Trump's intentions, why were certain people invited? And Trump, of course, has, has issued statements. So a lot of people want to know where he stands, and more importantly, what happened there and why. And there's also the questions about what Ye24 means, and I'll keep that a little bit vague so that they can answer to that and, and speak more to that. And then, of course, we're going to get into a lot of different issues. However, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. We're going to have a members-only uncensored. Would you like to introduce yourself, good sir? You did it. There you go. I think everybody knows who you are. And uh, which of uh, you gentlemen would like to introduce yourself? Nicholas, please. Hi. Yeah, I'm... Uh... Is that Nick Fuentes? Nick Fuentes first. Okay, so I guess this is a good time for a plug. If you're interested in seeing my rebuttal to Destiny's debate with Nick Fuentes on race and intelligence, I guess I could pin the link to the top of the comment section. But yeah, I'm quite familiar with Nick's work. It's interesting to see him with Kanye West. Hi, yeah, I'm uh, Nick Fuentes. First time here on the Tim Cast. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. What do you do? Oh, <laughs> I'm a live streamer. I, uh, I do a show called America First on Cozy.TV. All right. Don't be shy, Nick. So for those of y'all who are not familiar with Nick Fuentes, he first gained widespread notoriety in 2017 when he left Boston University after his attendance at the white supremacist Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. And in that rally, people on his side and people that he helped organize went out and terrorized this entire town. And in the process of doing so, they committed some extreme violence, which resulted in the murder of one person, Heather Heyer, I think her name was, and 
over 35 injuries. And when I say a white supremacist rally, this rally was primarily comprised of neo-Nazis, skinheads, the Ku Klux Klan, and the Proud Boys. But just a little bit more about Nick's background. He is a self-proclaimed white nationalist, but he's also a live streamer who advocates for pulling the Republican Party further to the right. He also took part in the Stop the Steal movement, which essentially relied on misinformation to false claimed that Donald Trump had won the 2020 election and he attended the January 6 riots which sought to overturn the results. Nick will tell you himself that he's not necessarily an advocate for democracy and that he would much rather prefer a Christian, predominantly white theocracy as our country's form of governance. He sees America's white demographic core as central to this country's identity. And he often stokes fears about how that white core is being erased or replaced with people of color and interracial dating. So that's something he's also uh, vehemently against. Some Republican lawmakers and conservative pundits like Donald Trump have publicly connected themselves with Fuentes, but because his worldview is so poisonous, most of them have, shall we say, distanced themselves from Nick. All right. And, and of course, course, Milo, you were here a couple weeks ago. ago. Yes, I'm your best, best ever guest. Oh my God. <laughs> so we, we, he is here. That's Milo Yiannopoulos, I think. He's really changed his look. Who resurrected this guy from the dead? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Milo was essentially a pioneer of the alt-right. And for those of you who don't know what like the alt-right is, I will explain it to you. The alt-right is basically a far-right set of ideologies, groups, and individuals whose core belief is, I mean aligned with Nick Fuentes is for the most part, their belief is that white identity is under attack by multicultural forces who use political correctness and social justice to undermine white people and their civilization, right? All these terms require like quotation marks because they're so politically charged. And the reason I made a sarcastic remark about Milo being resurrected from the dead is because he used to be a super popular right-wing pundit. But one day he was canceled due to outrage over several recordings that appeared to show Milo endorsing sex between young boys and older men. One of his comments, if I remember correctly, was made during an internet live stream. And in one of these clips, Milo said, the age of consent is not a black and white thing. And relationships between younger boys and older men can be a hugely positive experience. And when he said relationships, he was not talking about platonic relationships. He was talking about sexual relationships. After these recordings, he lost all of his sponsorships. So that's just a little background on Milo. We've been told that uh, the episode with you was one of the best podcasts ever. People really enjoyed hearing you speak. I think it's accurate. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks for coming back. back. Thanks. For, I was wondering how I was going to uh, make it even more extraordinary the second time I visited. But I think I might have pulled it off. <laughs> Luke's here. Total sausage fest tonight. Um, welcome. My name is Zuganowski of WeAreChange.org. Today I'm wearing my Epstein Didn't Epstein Himself t-shirt, which you can get on TheBestPoliticalShirts.com. And I think we should be using that word a little bit more, just like, you know, this YouTube channel didn't Epstein itself. And if this YouTube channel is Epstein... Dude, you're sitting with someone who endorsed, like, child predatory behavior. Like, this is so... These people are so sh fucking shady, dude. It's just so strange to me how people's entire existence gets so wrapped up into politics that turns their brain into jelly, you know? But that would be giving these people way too much credit. As you can see, like, this is all about, like, promotion. So this guy's, like, selling his t-shirt. Tim just put out his promotion for whatever the fuck. I think Nick promoted his podcast. These people, I don't think, are driven necessarily by ideas. I think they're driven by how profitable those ideas are. And we will be streaming on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, I started the t-shirt company after YouTube demonetized me. So I was talking to Trump for about a month. We had scheduled the dinner in October and then he announced for president. He, he pushed the dinner back to November and I've been pulling together a campaign and after I put up the, the DEFCON 
tweet uh, a bunch of people oh, that have been. That was a Def Defcon three. I saw that tweet. Or I heard about it. And so, like Alex Jones, like started getting contact with other people that were now on the you know the inside of the Matrix. And uh, Alex Jones pr producer said that Milo. Alex Jones is another controversial figure. For those of y'all who don't know, he runs a conspiracy show called Infowars, where he sells bogus supplements that have not gone through any rigorous ethical testing to see A, if they're effective, and B, if they're healthy. But he also claims on his show that democratic politicians are actually lizard people, that they're not human beings. Recently, he just lost a multi-million dollar lawsuit because he used his social media platforms to peddle this idea that the Sandy Hook elementary school shootings were actually staged by the government. As a result, the parents of the deceased children got together and sued him for defamation and emotional distress. So as you can see, these characters that are being talked about and that are talking are shady as hell by all objective measures. And I know that this video is going to come off as like partisan to so many people, but I promise you, I'm not speaking to you as somebody on the left. I'm trying my best to give the most empirically accurate whilst charitable representation of who these people are. Here we are. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how we go together. So I have some questions about that, but let's we'll, we'll, we'll get through the dinner portion of, you know, how exactly this happened, what went down. So this is how you get in contact, the three of you. How is it that Nick ends up invited to this dinner? And, and what happened? Well, he he was rolling with me. I was impressed with Nick and I was like, just come to the dinner. And we had uh, Karen Giorno uh, pick us up from the airport. And there was a lot of back and forth. There's another gentleman named Jamar Montgomery that was with us. It's a uh, he's an engineer at Boeing and his is it? I'm telling him just that uh, we should raise everyone's volume. OK, cool. Um, and we sat there and it was like when Trump came in, we were I said, do you want to sit alone? He's like, no, bring your friends in. So a big thing is like Trump had no idea who Nick Fuentes was. And but this whole I just I just got to go right to the heart of this oh, anti-Semite claim oh, that's happening. This is something if you read the definition, it it says you can't claim that there's multiple people inside of banks or in media that are all Jewish or you're anti They're not all Jewish, like the people who um the the board of directors at like wells fargo and at bank of america they have a couple jewish people on those boards but a lot of those names are like irish and italian like moynihan i think was one name let me google it bank of america yeah i mean these aren't necessarily jewish names so if we just look at it purely through a factual lens kanye seems to be incorrect moynihan i think that's an irish last name lionel noel he's black <laughs> Um, from what I can see, Sharon Allen. Allen isn't a Jewish last name. Almeida, Bramble, Weck, Donald, another black guy, Hudson. These are not Lozano, Ramos, Rose, White, Woods, um, Yast. I don't know. That could be a Jewish last name. Zuber, that could be a Jewish last name. Let's pick another big bank. Wells Fargo. And I'm not a big fan of banks either. I fucking, these people who run the banks, if you ask me, they're fucking evil, no matter what ethnicity they are. This is Wells Fargo that I'm looking at right now. Um, Carr, Daly, Flowers, Mac, Ling, Owens, Patterson, Powell. These are not Jewish last names. Um, Ricci, I don't know. Is that Italian or Jewish? Wise, I think that might be a Jewish last name board of directors. Black, Chansey, Clark, Davis, Hewitt, Morkin. That might be Jewish. Morris, Norwood. Semitic. And that's the truth. It's the truth. What are we talking about? And well, elaborate. What do you mean? You mean I'm saying like I've been labeled anti-Semite, right? So there's there's different beliefs about our our bloodlines. You know, like the documentary that Kyrie posted, and in general, America has been left. And that ignorant. was a big blunder. 
I don't believe he should have been suspended for that. And if you're going to suspend Kyrie for sharing a link, then the NBA needs to publicly criticize or disavow the company Amazon because they're the ones who platform that documentary. But we live in a society where people are so scared to attack corporations, so they focus on individuals. And I think it's a really cowardly way to A, conduct business, B, show that you actually care about social causes, which corporations don't. They might act like they do in order to appease their consumer base. If anything, I think suspending Kyrie Irving made anti-Semitism worse because one, it reinforced the anti-Semitic belief that Jews are controlling what people can and can't say and that if you criticize them, they're going to shut you down. And B, that's a conversation that should have been had in-house between Kyrie and the owner of the team. Because if you're making my brand look bad by sharing links to anti-Semitic documentaries that include, I don't know, um, inspirational quotes from Hitler, then yeah, you're making my business look bad. And we're going to have to talk about that, Kyrie. But suspending the man and doing it in such a public way so as to stoke anti-Semitism even more like bro because when you do that people are really going to start questioning like oh shit they do run society like if they could just suspend Kyrie like that or if they could just slash Kanye's net worth in half then what does that mean to like the ordinary person so I think the way they came down on Kyrie and they came down on Kanye even though I'm not a fan of either of those guys I think it's unfair and to a certain extent I agree with him it's unfair to cancel someone for pointing out obvious facts but that's not the only thing Kanye is being criticized for. Look, Jewish people are disproportionately represented in certain industries and certain professions that have significant influence over society. That's just a simple fact. When you take a look at law, education, finance, and entertainment especially, it becomes very clear that they wield a disproportionate amount of power in those sectors. But that fact in and of itself doesn't really tell us much, right? Because what matters more is how we choose to perceive that fact, which brings us to Kanye's perception of the Jews or the American Jews. Now, he doesn't contextualize that his problem is with American Jews. And part of me wishes that he would contextualize who his problem is really with, which is rich, powerful American Jewish people who work at the top of the entertainment industry. These are the people Kanye really has a problem with. These are the people that he has accused of screwing him over. But when prejudice clouds your logic, you fail to contextualize. By definition, people who are prejudiced towards entire groups of people just see black and white. They don't see gray area. And if you want to avoid falling into a prejudicial mindset, contextualization is important because when you contextualize, you historicize. When you historicize, you pluralize. And when you pluralize, you acknowledge the complexity of different groups. And you begin to realize that it is a logical stretch to clump everybody together and say this group is a problem or that group is a problem. There may be Jews in high places who make bad decisions that inflict pain and suffering onto others. I mean, the Israeli occupation, for instance, is a perfect example of that. But that can be said about any dominant social group who is ruling over a minority. Anytime you have a dominant social majority, you are going to have people within that majority who abuse their power because how else did they get to where they are? Now, going back to Jewish people, that's a little more complex. So while I personally think it's okay to criticize people in positions of power who make bad decisions, even if they happen to be Jewish, I don't think it's appropriate to reduce their bad decisions to their ethnicity or generalize the bad decisions of a few across an entire ethnic demography. That's not fair. I mean, if your gripe is with influential people who wield their power in an abusive way, then why not just criticize white supremacy rather than fixating on one single ethnic group? And history has been changed. So when we start questioning things, that question the indoctrination then you immediately get, you know, um, you said debanked or de what did you say happened to you or 
demonetized, deplatformed. De yeah, demonized, demonetized. And what's so beautiful about this time is everyone got to see what's really been happening. And now we can really understand. We can see that Ron Emanuel was right next to Obama and then Jared Kushner was right next to Trump. Uh, I think I think the issue is uh, one way to put it is you're a a expounding upon a localization issue that you've witnessed, right? L let me let me clarify. There are a handful of people that you see are Jewish in a certain place, and then you associate Judaism with the power. As a, whereas I view that as not relevant to it. Like, yeah, you're substantially more powerful than I am, but I don't view what you're doing as an issue of black people. That's yeah, a good but point. have you ever heard the term the black vote? So it's okay to put us in one net, but it's not okay for me to put them in one net. Yeah, but I mean, no, that, it's it's not okay to put anyone in one net. And realizing for decades, we were all wondering how this dam was going to break. Everybody in the country was wondering, what, what is the root of this hypocrisy? Why can people talk about white people a certain way? Why can't they talk about that group a certain way? And dude, it's just a matter of thinking these topics through. Yes, it can be said that American Jews are hypersensitive to any criticism of their ethnicity. And sometimes that hypersensitivity comes out through blackballing. But A, there are reasons why some American Jews are hypersensitive to any criticisms made about their ethnicity, right? There was something called the Holocaust that happened. And B, not all American Jews respond to criticism of how people within their group operate the same way. So you have people like Robert Reich, Noam Chomsky, Norman Finkelstein, and a whole host of others who are critical of the Jewish ethno nation state called Israel and how that country is pushing Palestinians off of their land. So in that vein, there is room within the Jewish community for self-critique because no group is immune from that. My ethnic origins are in Puerto Rico. If Puerto Rico decided to colonize the Dominican Republic tomorrow in some parallel universe, I would specifically criticize the Puerto Ricans who are involved in facilitating that process, but I would not criticize all Puerto Ricans. See, criticism is completely fine, but it should be measured and it should be well thought out. And one should be mindful about casting a net that is too broad because the last time someone casted a net that was too broad on the Jewish people, they ended up almost having their entire ethnicity exterminated. So yeah, if I were Jewish, I would be a little sensitive when people start ascribing malicious intent to the group that I identify with. Because you're personable to the common person and you probably would do well with the black vote, absolutely. Just because I'm black is a lot of black people don't like me. Uh, of, yeah. of course, I think uh, I think race. What do you mean? Of course, bro. You just contradicted yourself. You said he would do well with the black vote, and when he told you a lot of black people don't like him, you said, "Of course." Uh, of, of course, I think uh, I think race plays a role in a lot of things. Absolutely, and I think that's for. I think I think the I the construct of race has really been forced upon us as just something for us to be woke about and just. No, the idea of race was forced upon us in the 15th century when Christopher Columbus set off to the new world and decided to enslave people on the basis of how they looked. That's when racial constructs came into the picture. It wasn't manufactured as a tool to spread wokeness. Something for us to be woke about and just constantly talk about and use it as these like, Walls. Could you but, say, say no, the same thing about? No, race was developed by European colonizers in the 15th century to justify land appropriation, genocide, and the extraction of material wealth that went towards building Europe into a massive empire that still sees the benefits of slavery and colonialism. I mean, where do you think Belgium got its wealth from? Got it from the rubber that was extracted in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Where do you think the United States got its wealth from? It got it from cotton fields where cotton was picked by slaves. Where do you think the Spanish got their wealth from? They got their wealth from sugarcane plantations in Puerto Rico and in Cuba and in the Dominican Republic. Where do you think Great Britain got its wealth from? It got it from the sugarcane fields in Jamaica. It got it from the railroads that were built by forced labor in India. Judy 
confuse them? Well, let's look at the facts of what I'm saying, though. If you say in this neighborhood where they gerrymander, there's this amount of time. So, hey, I wasn't doing that. Was Kanye, who's doing most of the gerrymander? It is the Republican Party that you affiliate yourself with. A time. So, hey, I wasn't doing that. I was just gerrymandering the lawyers and the Hollywood executives. And OK, and what race are the lawyers in the Hollywood executives, Kanye? We can fixate on Jewishness all you want, but eventually we're going to have to confront white supremacy using your logic, not using my logic, using your logic. Because the common denominator is that the people who wield a disproportionate amount of power and control over all of our institutions in this country are white. But God forbid you say that, right? Can't burn too many bridges, can't go full black separatists, otherwise your net worth will go from 3 billion to 500 million to fucking zero. So it's it's a really interesting dynamic. When you listen to what he's saying, there is very little mention of black people in this whole ordeal. So again, Kanye, what means more to you? Your hatred for Jewish people or your love for black people? Because it sounds like your hatred for Jewish people is clouding your ability to exercise love for the people you claim to care about. And ultimately, Kanye's discourse is appeasing white supremacy. Because even though Jews are seen as white, they still suffer the cultural backlash of being branded as a shady people, as an untrustworthy people, as a greedy people. I don't know if Kanye knows that he's actually playing into the hands of white supremacy by creating a wedge between black folks and Jewish folks, but that's exactly what he's doing. So of course, Nick is gonna love everything that Kanye is saying, especially considering the fact that it's a black man who's saying these things. He's saying what Nick can't say because Nick doesn't have the power or the pull or the influence that Kanye does. So in many ways, Kanye is the mouthpiece for Nick and what Nick has been fighting for for the past eight years. And the people at the bank that debanked me and then froze my accounts. You know, it's like we want to jump into protecting the idea that we can't put a net around something, right? But that's been my job as a producer to take, uh, you know, a Roy Air sample and put a but James. Bro, not everything connects. He likes to draw these like spurious associations between music and engineering and sociological constructs. Like, bro, you don't have to pretend to be a fucking expert in everything just because you are a brilliant musician and artist. Sometimes a gift you have to pick up on certain sounds or see certain notes or etch out a design in your head for a pair of shoes does not translate to social dynamics. And when you start playing playing in this arena and you don't know what the layout is and you go in thinking you have all the answers, that's how you get caught up because your conception of society and the way in which it operates cannot be reduced to intuition to passion, to creativity, which are things that you've leveraged to become as brilliant as you are. I don't think Kanye understands how little he understands about the world. And it's frustrating to see because there are people who are much more qualified, competent, and capable of describing Jewish black relations or anti-Semitism or the history of the Holocaust than he is. This is like a passion project for him. He thinks he's on this like moral crusade. But that's been my job as a producer to take uh you know a roy air sample and put a james brown drum and put it within a two two minute three minute song that's the way i actually think and that's the way i talk and now this morning i found out that they were trying to put me in prison because what they did was uh, I, put, I moved 140 million dollars into uh jp morgan and I said, hey, I want to talk to Jamie Dimon. Like, look at me. I'm just going in naive, you know, multi-billionaire. Like, may maybe Jamie Dimon will let me in on some deal flow. Wrong. <laughs> and I'm just like <laughs> banging. So you're trying to like go through the back door to gain special favor with people and have deals done on the basis that you're rich and famous, but you're also criticizing Jews for leveraging their power and influence to collaborate with each other so that they could preserve their material resources. Bro, do you not see the contradiction here? Y'all, I don't want to listen to a rich billionaire complain about how another rich billionaire didn't grant him special privileges to stack 
stash $150 million in their bank under the terms and conditions that he thought were fair. No, I don't have time for this. And my hands like, I want to meet with Jamie. And I start complaining online. Yeah, because bro, you, you are the same thing that you criticize. You are a self-entitled, egotistical, tone deaf, inconsiderate asshole who doesn't care about anybody but himself. Regardless of how many people you hurt, include, and I don't usually do this, but including the people in your family, you are never to blame. It's always somebody else's fault. Jay-Z's fault, Kim Kardashian's fault, Jewish people's fault, CNN's fault, Adidas's fault, but it's never your fault. And then they debank me for complaining. And so I'm, I'm about to get debanked. They're like, you need to go to Trump's the bank. AX. Nah, they debank you because you were talking shit about them publicly. It's the same thing if you walk into a McDonald's and start ordering shit that's not even on the menu. And then when you don't get that shit, you start causing a ruckus and yelling at the cashier. And you say, where's the manager? I want to speak to the manager. The manager comes out. You start yelling at her because she doesn't have what you want on the menu. What the fuck do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to serve you food? Or do you think they're going to tell you, sir, you're causing a ruckus. You're bothering our other customers. You're stressing out our employees. We don't serve pizza here. We serve hamburgers and french fries. If you want pizza, you could go across the street to Pizza Hut. It's the same thing. Kanye just strikes me as the ultimate Karen. Oh, whatever. You got to go. And I'm like, I've been trying to buy my own bank for the longest. And then we figured out how to get my own bank. It's like 50 million, 75 million. So I'm about to buy my own bank. But then, then bro, I, I don't know. I don't know what y'all want me to do I, I gotta skip ahead more MLK because as I'm getting hosed down every day by the press and financially I'm just standing there the fucking audacity for him to use that analogy of black people in the civil rights movement getting hosed down to compare that to personal gripes he has with people who won't let him stash 150 million dollars in their bank because he wants it done under his terms and conditions i don't remember the last time i heard anyone who was as tone deaf as he is i'm not that they tried to put me in jail it was like a dog was biting my arm and i i i, I, almost, I almost shed a tear almost but i still walked in stride through it i'm good if y'all enjoyed this reaction please comment like subscribe tell me what you think it's just it's too much it's too much toxicity too much misinformation too much self-entitlement it's just too much going on hey y'all after i saw the video i heard that kanye actually walked out of the interview so i'm just gonna skip to that point and then we're gonna be done with the reaction i think i think, I think they've, they've been extremely unfair, unfair to you I who was they though we can't or, say who they or, is. Or can we? Press. I'm not using the. I don't use the word as the, as the way I guess you, you guys use. I'm, I'm talking. It is about them, it. though, isn't it? I mean, because <laughs> no. and, and because when you think <laughs> about it, consider it. In 2018. What do you mean it's not? It, what What do I mean? Like, uh, uh, okay, so how about are you leaving? Are you afraid of the press? He's on. I'll yeah, say it right now. Um, of, of course he's leaving because he's a pussy who can't take any negative pushback or constructive feedback whatsoever. And if he could, maybe his marriage would have lasted longer. Yeah, I'm done. All right, y'all. Again, please comment, like, and subscribe if you got something out of this reaction. I'll see you next time. Peace.